Good afternoon. It is February the 16th, 2017, and time to recap what we did today and take a look at tonight and tomorrow. We'll start with our customary disclaimer. Hypothetical simulated performance results may have certain limitations, unlike an actual performance record. Simulated results do not represent actual trading. Also, since the trades have not been executed, the results may have under or overcompensated for the impact, if any, of certain market factors, such as lack of liquidity. Simulated trading programs in general are also subject to the fact that they are designed with the benefit of hindsight. No representation is being made that any account will or is likely to achieve profit or losses similar to those shown. Well, that says it all, right? So, here we are. Okay, uh, we came into the E-mini today, and we thought that we might actually sell today, so... We're going to sell failure to take out 49 to 50. And we had a beautiful retest failure and an S up here, and that was good for four. Uh, this S, you could have eked out a point if you exited over here, scratched to maybe a point. Uh, had two right here on that B, then we have a retest failure. Lower high, we don't get an S on that bar, and this was the trade of the day, a winner. This one would have given you at least one. Retest failure off the uh, bottom right here, depending on where you got out, was positive. Uh, mean green trade here, plus one. Another mean green trade, uncomfortable as could be, if you stayed with it, plus two. And here we find ourselves right now. So pretty good day trading the uh, E-mini, but again, uh, the market has long periods of sideways movement where it doesn't do much. Uh, and you can see what happens when there's act when the market actually sells. We get some good volatility. We have some trades that work. And when the market's not doing anything, like it's on the buy side, volatility drops out pretty quickly. So uh, I don't think that's going to be over for a while either. On our F1 screen, inside day, trade it tomorrow. We don't have a lot of news tomorrow. We've got... Uh, up e-commerce electronic commerce retail sales don't know what it is but last reported plus 4.0 I have no feel for how that would come in but my guess is it's probably higher than forecast as the walk-in establishments lose business LEI plus four tenths no one pays attention to it Baker Hughes rig count was 1093 it could come in higher So, um, this piece of news right here is probably important. It hasn't had a lot of play, um, but each year it will become more and more important, I believe. Looking at today's profile, it shouldn't surprise anybody, it is a B. hour ago we guessed we might close the market in the 42-43 area. I don't see any reason to change that, but the longer the market doesn't break, the more likely it is to trade higher. So. Right now, I think the trade's pretty much the same. Selling 49s to 51s, 54s to 56s. I really don't like the short side of the market, although today we were fairly aggressive on the short side. We thought that the market might actually correct. Um, the 39.41 by one, 35.37 by two. written down. Hope everybody had a good day. Should have. One of the things that you're going to learn is, is that we do our homework, we do our research, put all this in, and it's not as precise as we tell ourselves it is. This is not physics, it's not mathematics. It's statistics. You're trading expectations. You're trading a probability. Um, and that's a hard thing to accept, especially if you put hours and hours and hours in. Uh, and the way that you compensate for that is that you backtest, backtest, trade, do all sorts of stuff that you don't trade, just backtest and making sure you have the perfect system. Then you're going to trade it. 
And then you put that perfect system to work and you got a couple of losers. Well, that wasn't so perfect. <coughs> Back to the drawing board. And eventually, you just say, screw it. I can do no more study. I'm either going to learn how to trade or I'm not. And that's when you really take your first big step into becoming a trader. The rest of it is just that groundwork. It's foundational. And then you figure out that all you can do is take the trades. And some work and some don't. And that's another huge step out there. Treasuries. Higher low, higher high. Find a place to buy it. Look at the F2 on. And if you find yourself reluctant to trade it, then is this really for you? OK, resistance starts at 16 to 17. Uh, this morning we were hope we had a 7 to 11 and a 15 to 19 sell. And uh, the 7 to 11 trade worked early. And then the 15 to 19 worked late. Uh, so right now we're selling 16 to 20. 23 to 27, sell 2. On the buy side, um, now it's strong right now. Let's make it uh, 8 to 12. And the buck to 4. And so, you know, when you come in and you read the books and you get started in this, you really think that um, uh, it's a much different game than it is. And but you got to remember how you got into investments and the rest of it. You like something, uh, you didn't like it, you bought it or you sold it, and you gave plenty of time for the trade to work. You weren't leveraged. Uh, you could absorb the uh, market variations, the wiggles and the turns, and you made money. And so then you get involved in futures to increase the leverage and you start paying attention to dollars. You're not trading ticks, you're trading dollars. And uh, that's where the fun begins, the fun of personal growth. And all personal growth requires you to change. And we're reluctant to change. OK, our second sell today was 31 to 03. Uh, that looks pretty good right now. Sell one. Don't make 11 to 15, sell two. Both markets are pointed higher. I don't know if I trust that. We'll have to see what the E-mini does. If the E-mini rallies, this market probably will not rally. Uh, last rotate down stopped at 21. We're at 27. Then we had a 24. So 20 to 24 is buy one. Excuse me, is number one. Boy, I blew this, didn't I? This is number one. Sell is 7 to 11, sell one. Then we'll make 15 to 19, sell 2. And on the downside, 20 to 24 is number 1. So we're buying 13s to 17s, buy 1. And uh, the buck, say 01 to 05 for buy 2. And so as we start personally growing, you know, there's got to be a checklist. You know, what am I, how am I going to judge my growth and the rest of that? And the only way that you can judge it is, do I do what good traders do? And what does a good trader do? He trades his methodology. And um, if you're not able to do that, then this is not your game. Higher low, higher high in gold. Looks like we're going for stops about 12.50. We've been talking about that for a week. We haven't made it yet, but I think it's still there. And if you're long calls, you're long 12.50 calls right now. So gold is pointed higher. Um, leaning P with the Globex session, definitely a P today. Uh, so a little bit higher in London. Uh, we rejected prices above 43, so we'll make it 44, 46, sell one. Might want to make that 43, 45, but we'll go on the assumption that it might be a little higher in London. 
Sell two at 49 to 51. On the buy side, uh, we had a 35.37. Um, so we'll make our buy uh, 36.38, buy one. And then 30.32, buy two. One dynamic we'll have tomorrow is end of the week profit taking. And that's how some people have solved their tickitis. They put a trade on on Monday and they stop out or they come back and they take it off on Fridays. And that's not a bad way to trade if you can keep your hand off the mouse and have other things to do. Crude oil. We had a big day. Uh, and um, we had losses. And we still came out. We came out really, really well. Um, outside day means trading range, so we're still in, a, in our trading range where we have been. And um, boy, the market is uh, holding in, so maybe uh, we're still in the same boat we've been in the last couple of days. We're selling 50s to 75, sell one. 54 to 54 and a quarter, sell two. On the buy side, um, last rotate stopped uh, 96 down. So let's make it 75 to 53 for buy one. And then 52 and a quarter, 52, 50 buy two. Gosh. On crude oil, we may have to change our approach to the market. We may have to be selling value area highs, second standard deviations. We might have to be buying the, the counterpart. Um, we might have to be leaning against support and resistance if we lose volatility. What has made the program work for Rich's program work was he had an average trading range of 170 ticks. Day session. Um, and uh, that's come in quite a bit here this year. And if that is the case, we'll just trade structure like we do on the bonds. And that's the lazy man's way to trade. And it's a great way to trade because uh, you really have instantaneous gratification. You just know very quickly if you're right or you're wrong. And you have a shot at a tremendous range. Uh, so you can really operate in that five to one um, risk reward. And in day trading, unfortunately, I have to tell you this, most of the time it's one to one. Higher low, higher high in the euro, have no reason uh, to see why it's, no fundamental reason and why it's so high, but the stock market didn't rally today. That's probably good, for, good as any. Uh, business, all the uh, fundamental news came in this morning for the euro, stronger than forecast. It did sell early, but did not break. So, uh, 10690, 107, I believe we'll see that in London. And 10725. One oh six fifty by one. 625 by 2. And we'll leave it at that. We'll take a look at it tomorrow morning. This is a great contract to trade, especially if you can trade London time. Now, Jeff gets up 2.33 a.m. in the morning and trades these hours. But uh, if you're night owl, it works well and can sleep late. But it's slower but really, really trends well. And that's it for this February the 16th, 2017. You all have a great evening. We'll be out there again in the morning trying to shake that money tree one more time before the weekend. Uh, we had fun today, and uh, hopefully we'll have as much fun tomorrow. You all have a great evening.